as people approach death, the things that are most important in life seem to be coming into very sharp focus. Maybe uh, some conversations that they've been putting off might happen with family members or connecting with estranged friends or family. <coughs> some of those things that are most important really come to the fore as people approach death. So the question is then, you know, as Jesus approaches death, and uh, as Peter said, he's, this is part of a long talk he's having with his disciples the night before he died. He has, he has some words to say and then he has some prayer. And he prays initially a bit for himself and then for his disciples. And then what we heard today is he's praying for the disciples of the future. Which is us. So what's the most important thing that seems to come to his mind as he approaches death? What is the prayer that he prays for us today? I pray that they may all be one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you've sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. It's pretty full on, isn't it? Jesus' final words and prayers with his disciples before he dies adds a lot of weight to them. I've noticed that those words do not seem to be quoted as often as other parts of Scripture when we're having our heated debates in the church. The poem I included in uh, Minister's Musings this month points to the key issue that Jesus is raising. It doesn't really matter what the subject is that we're debating or that we might have disagreement on. It doesn't really matter which way we decide on those sort of controversial topics where we're having arguments. These questions remain is the time. Who we are to be with one another. How we are to be with one another. Those questions are still going to be there no matter which way we go. How are we to be one as Jesus prays? What does that mean? Is that an intellectual sort of thing? About agreeing on different uh, points? Is it a spiritual sort of oneness? Is it a practical oneness? Is it a denominational oneness? I don't think Jesus was thinking of that at the time. One way to bring ourselves back down to earth about oneness is to think of families. Okay, put your hand up if your family is just wonderful, perfect, and everybody gets on really well, and they all agree. <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> and, um, well, what about when mum and dad was alive? <laughs> and, uh, you know, all their personalities are very similar and very like likeable, and... Um, they all seem to get on very well with each other and uh, they never argue and if there is a little bit of a disagreement you'll quietly step back and allow the others to go. Is that how families work? <laughs> Not really. Very rarely. Except for own 
<laughs> Yet, we will talk about our family as, as we and us, you know, we the Watts mob or us the Bishop mob or the Duncan mob or the Anderson mob or the, well, that, we, we'll, we'll use we and us for our family. We'll talk about our family. We we'll still talk about ourselves as one family. Even though, as we all know, families can be, you know, all over the place. And there can be very heated discussions going on. And that can give us a bit of an idea, maybe, because uh, th that is one of the ways in which it's described about being part of God's family and being children of God. So that can give us an idea about the oneness and how it might work. The world seems to be full of division though these days. And at times it seems to be getting more and more strident. Most of the time the world is operating on a basis of an us and them. An us and them sort of mentality. Our group always has to be favoured over them. The other group. Our group is the norm and they are the unusual ones. We are right, they are wrong. We are better than them. We are superior to them. We keep going and it gets to we hate them. They are evil personified. They cause all our problems. Our life can only thrive if their life suffers. But really no one can be right because our knowledge is only partial. We're all wrong to some extent. To claim to be right is to claim to be in the place of God. One reflection I read made a connection between our fear of death and our need to create us and thems. In other words, because we fear death, we are prepared to do anything to feel more alive and to avoid or to deny death. And that can mean putting others down or dehumanising them in order to feel better about ourselves, us and them. Jesus' vision is that we are all us. There aren't any thems. We're all us. We're all human. There's no need to be afraid of death. We've been set free from that fear of death through the cross. And we are to live love because that way of love is the only way through death. So if we meet someone who is different to us, we are to give love without fear of the cost, without fear of death, out of our freedom from death. One picture offered by Paul for this oneness, if you like, is the body of Christ. When one part of the body suffers, all suffer. When one part of the body is diminished, the rest is diminished. I wanted to offer you also some uh, other images from around well, actually from a few indigenous perspectives. One comes from indigenous Africans. It's a concept of Ubuntu. You might have heard of that. I am because we are is one way that Ubuntu is described. Nelson Mandela, for example, introducing his jailers as honoured guests at his inauguration as president. 
is one expression of this Ubuntu. Taking the field with a springbok shirt on was another expression of that Ubuntu. I am because we are. Desmond Tutu said, I am human because I belong, is a way of describing it. I participate, I share. In contrast to the dehumanisation of colonisation. I can only exist, well colonisation is kind of like, I can only exist as the coloniser if you <coughs> cease to exist. Or if you never existed, or you're lower or inferior to me. That's how colonisation works, us and them. Whereas Ubuntu is more like a person with Ubuntu is open and available to others, affirming of others, does not feel threatened that others are able and good, for he or she has a proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that he or she belongs in a greater whole and is diminished when others are humiliated or diminished themselves. When others are tortured or oppressed, that diminishes them. When it's a bit like the body of Christ, when others are treated less than they are, it diminishes them. So Desmond Tutu says, Ubuntu is the essence of being human. It speaks of the fact that my humanity is caught up and inextricably bound up in your humanity. I am human because I belong. It speaks about wholeness and about compassion. A person with Ubuntu is welcoming, hospitable, warm and generous and willing to share. Such people are open and available to others, willing to be vulnerable and affirming of others, and they don't feel threatened that others might be better than themselves. And this quality gives a sense of resilience and enabling them to survive and emerge still human despite all efforts to dehumanise them. There's a story about an anthropologist who was studying the habits and customs of an African group and found himself surrounded most days by a bunch of children. So he decided to play a little game with them and he managed to get some lollies from the nearest town and put them all in a lovely pretty basket at the foot of a tree. And then he called the children and suggested they play the game. What he said was, now, when I yell out now, you've got to run towards the tree and the first one to get there can have all the lollies to themselves. So the children all lined up, waiting for the signal. And then the anthropologist said, now! And all the children took each other by the hand ran together towards the tree and they all arrived at the same time, divided up the lollies, sat down and began to happily munch away. The anthropologist went over to them and asked why they'd all run together when any one of them could have had all the lollies to themselves. The children responded, Ubuntu, how could any of us be happy if all the others were sad? Another experience for me with regard to oneness, unity, is that which I found in the Kimberley with our original people. Now, uh, well, any time you're, you're um, relating to people of different cultures, differences are really obvious, usually. There's quite a lot of differences, and maybe they stick out a lot when you're in relationships and you're talking and trying to be friends. 
you can have uh, completely different world views, completely different ways of understanding uh, just basic everyday relationship things as well as bigger things about the world. Perception will be different. Ways of thinking will be different. Yet I found there was absolutely no problem with being us. Even though we had a whole stack of differences. They used the term manga, which was just kind of like uh, being part of their family. It was like being part of their family. They had another term called wuna, which was a bit of a difficult thing to translate into English. It's a bit of a, a part, partly a, a very practical thing, a system of, of, of trade and exchange, laws about economic, symbolic and ceremonial sharing, complex law of relationships that dictate how people are to relate to one another. With patience, if you play your part in this wunan, you can allow the one arm to provide for all your needs. So there's this whole system of connections and mutual obligations. So the one arm can be just within a family, but it can go beyond that to a community, and in fact it kind of goes beyond that to the whole of the kindling. It's, uh, everyone knows who's meant to be giving to who and who's obliged to who and how it all works. That's another way, if you like, of some people living out some oneness, caring for each other. There's obviously distinctions between different groups, but there's no necessity so much for an us and them sort of higher, lower top us and them. Then I thought I'd give you another image, if you like, of oneness. This comes from uh, Aboriginal young people, Burke, who, um, with the help of uh, a media group, have put together a song. And uh, it it's doesn't deny the reality of their everyday lives, which can be full of difficulty and full of... Uh, drugs and alcohol and abuse and violence and um, going, people going to jail and all those sort of things. And they're, they're naming all of that and they're, you mightn't pick up all their lyrics because it's kind of half uh, rap. So a bit fast, I can give you the lyrics later on if you're interested. But you can see a lot of their, you can see joy in them and joy in their faces and they're, they're doing this as a, as, a, as a oneness for their own group, trying to give, give them a positive message basically about life and also seeing that go well beyond them to other communities as well. So I thought I'd give you this different image. We the people of the Red Sunset. Thank you.
my family's mental health Better check if you are right or make sure that you sleep at night Better keep that dream alive, exercise and eating right Now's the time to show our pride and take this yard Australia wide Turn it back to what I'm meant to be, I'll take back my identity I'll maintain my integrity, I'm black in the 21st century Yep, there's still room for improvement, work with us to start a movement Work about to change the game and break the chains with this new music Yeah, if you fed in, can prove it bread, you better shake your leg If you for real, sis, hands up if you feel this If you on track, you better learn your lingo, bring it back Learn the facts, learn your language, yeah, be proud, be black We live in black and white, get rid of that stereotype Never give up, don't keep the truth, if you can be anything you like Yep, you gotta grab that mic, gotta keep that fire alight Gotta keep on dreaming, keep your chin up, keep on shining bright We from a place where the warm wind blows My place, my home, my spirit We the people of the red sunset We can make like the swells in the river We from a place where the warm wind blows My place, my home, my spirit We the people of the red sunset We can make like the swells in the river You can see in it, there's a, there's a sense of belonging giving them strength too, like they're belonging to country, very strong connection to country and, and to their place and people. And that seems to give them a great strength, then that sense of belonging together in a place for going beyond themselves to care for others. The so what spirit was, was prevalent during that song. Yes. Like a lot of them. Oh yeah. The word spirit. Yeah. Yeah, well they quite commonly talk about spirit. Mm. Yeah, yeah, many of them. And the spirit of the creator and the like up in the Kimberley, the wandering of spirit people. Mm. And and it's all connected with the creator. The oneness Jesus speaks of has that sense of belonging too, as Peter read, it's it's a, a oneness in God. That's where we belong, in God, and God in us. And the chief characteristic of that oneness is love. And that gives freedom from fear, freedom from fear of death, freedom to give, freedom to include. In the Ubuntu way, you might say, you do not feel threatened that others are able and good because you feel so self-assured and free to be able to give. You belong to a greater whole. All people belong in the greater whole of God. Loving God who gives and who loves to the extent of the cross to the extent of dying for us, that we might live. And that ditches all needs to dehumanise other people. It get, gets rid of all, all sense of having put people down and even having to have a low self-esteem because look what God's done for us. It ditches all sense of needing to exclude people. It ditches all these ugly, life-destroying things that we see around us in the us and them stuff. It ditches all the need to be, to have any sense of supremacy over somebody else. We're free from that. Oneness with Jesus and God ultimately means being in the world as Jesus was. The essence of living love in the world can be a dangerous path, but it's a path where there aren't any us and thems. We're all us together and we're free to care, to forgive, to love as Jesus was. 
Amen.